Hello everyone. It's um it's not Sunday today. We this is a bit unusual. It's Thursday. Um we've got an extra episode. I mean next month is going to be the first year anniversary of Astro Drama and I thought this is so good because we're having an extra episode of Astro Drama on a Thursday. Um the reason for it being is because the band or the drummer of the band that uh, we're going to have on today um they posted this thing on social media saying that if any podcaster out there wanted to speak to the band uh then you know so i did and sent them a message and i feel so honored that they actually so like reply to me <laughs> or to to us as the drummer so um i'm gonna bring him in now and i uh, can't wait to speak to him so my dear friends please welcome mike heaton of embrace hey. Hi there, how you doing? <laughs> You all right? Um, yeah. Uh, how are you? Yeah, I'm very good, thanks. Very good, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, uh, as, as I've said during the introduction, that it's really good that Embrace um, posted this on social media. They're sort of like inviting podcasters. So, like, uh, to um, um, get you sort of like talking to, to us or to all the podcasters out there. Because, um, But when I did it, at the time, I thought, oh, you're not gonna solve it talking to me or anything, but I feel I'm so grateful that you actually did that. You sent me an email saying, All "Right, uh, it's fine." Yeah, okay. So, um, what's the weather like there where you are now? Are you in? Uh, um, I'm. Where? I'm near. I'm, in, I'm not far from you. I'm near Leeds. So uh, yeah, near Leeds and Huddersfield. So uh, the weather's it's all right. It's okay. It's fairly warm. It's dry. So it's it's all right. Yeah. It's it's better than uh, last week when we had a bit of a sort of like heat wave. At least it's a uh, cool down a bit. So yeah, like, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's good because in my in my studio here, it's it's completely uh, soundproof and uh, yeah, it's like an oven when it gets warm because uh, the air air condition doesn't work that well. So it's kind of uh, yeah. Last week it was absolutely. I think it was about forty odd degrees in here at one point. So yeah, yeah far too warm for me. That setup that you've got there, that's absolutely amazing. <laughs> so, like, there's something about drums that you see there. I mean, guitars are okay, but drum kits are just so incredible to look at. It's <laughs> so beautiful. Yeah, they're the, the, the great. You know, some, some of these drums I've had for a long time as well. So uh, I, I collect snare drums as well. So I've got a snare drum collection, but that's um, that's mainly in the garage. So I've got about, I don't know, oh, quite wow. a few. 35 40 snare drums and like that's that's incredible but yeah well anyways i've got um i just want to say hello to trevor palmer i actually want to say thank you to trevor because he's the one who tagged me or so like um let um the, the so like heads up for that um social media the twitter post that embrace did uh it was trevor who sent me a message saying that you have to sort like get in touch with them for you know, to have you on the show. So thank cool. you, Trevor. He's in Skipton. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, not too far away. Yeah. Nice, nice area <laughs> of the country. Yeah, so he said hi, Mike. So good to see you. <laughs> so, hi, Trevor. <laughs> so um, welcome to Ask the Drummer. Um, episode 47 is all about you, uh, Mike Heaton. So um, we're going to start so, like from the very beginning. Um, so you're born in West Yorkshire, or so whereabouts in West Yorkshire were you born? I, I was born. Um, well, I, I was born in Bradford, um, but uh, yeah. I yeah, born in Bradford, and then I actually grew up in in the house I'm in now. Still, you know, I, I grew up here, moved away for a long time, and then came back here and uh, and took the family house on. So yeah, I'm I'm kind of back where I started. All right. Uh, so and where's that? Is that uh, near or oh, near Leeds, or is it sort yeah, of like it's, in, of it's in between Leeds and Huddersfield? Yeah. Oh, between Leeds and Huddersfield. and what yeah. was it like? What was it like growing in that part of England when, like, <clears> uh, <throat> especially the music scene uh, uh, at the time? You know, when you were growing up. Yeah, I mean, it, it was good. It was good. I, I kind of, I, I, well, I still have got an older brother, <clears throat> and he uh, uh, he's four years older than me, so he kind of his musical tastes filtered down. So I, I started listening to music, you know, at a very young age. And, you know, by the time I was, you know, eight, nine, 
I was I was already into the that that was the time of the the first punk era. So I was kind of really into the Pistols and the uh, and the Clash and and people like that. You know, and the Damned first time round, Stranglers, uh, who I still love. All these bands that I still absolutely love. Um, um, I, I, and yeah, it was good because there was a. There was a few of my friends also started playing instruments fairly young. You know, we weren't we were rubbish. We weren't very good. Um, I mean, within the, the sort of embrace people, everyone knows the story of how I kind of started because I didn't want to be a drummer at first. I wanted to be a guitarist <clears throat> because yeah. I loved I loved the white Les Paul that um, Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols had. <clears throat> and that's why when, when I got to 11 years old, that's why I asked for one of those for my uh, I think it's my birthday. Um, yeah. and my dad was quite a traditional guy. Uh, he'd done a bit of drumming when he was in the uh, in the in the youth in the army, and um, so when I woke up for my 11th birthday, rather than a white Les Paul, which I never I knew I wouldn't get anyway because they're too expensive, but instead <laughs> of that, I, I had a I had a snare drum, you know, on a stand. Uh, and my dad said, you know, because he hated the Sex Pistols, he hated everything they stood oh. for. You know, so okay. and he thought guitarists were probably the worst people in the band. <clears throat> so he, uh, so he, he said he bought me a drum instead, uh, uh, and I got the drum and I said, okay, I'll be a drummer then. Uh, and I, I started playing the drums. And luckily, the same birthday, a friend of mine called Vince Clark, he uh, he, he got a guitar. So we started yeah. a, a little band together, just hitting things as hard as we could and making a load of noise. Right, it's it's not. <clears throat> It's not Vince Clark, the Pesh no. Mode Vince Clark. No, 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 no. It's not Vince Clark. No. No. no, it's a different Vince Clark. I, I don't know where Vince, Vince is Clark. now. He he went traveling years ago. I lost track of him. But yeah, me and him started making noise. And then another friend of ours, John Oldfield, he he, he tried to do some singing. Uh, I've still actually got a tape recording of a tape recording of us when we were 12 years old making a terrible noise. Um, uh, and then I kind of, I, I gradually obviously learned how to play the drums and, um, and did then, you, you know, did, did you have any drumming lessons or did you just sort of uh, like teach yourself? Not for the first, for the first couple of years, I, I just taught myself. Uh, I just played along with records. Um, and I found it relatively easy to, to be able to play the drums fairly well. So then I, I did start to having lessons when I was in my sort of mid teens. Um, but I never found a drum teacher that, that sort of was on the same wavelength of me, as me. I went to one guy in Bradford for about two lessons and he, all he did was try to teach me how to read music and to play Hotel California, uh, which is a great song, <laughs> but you know, I, I was into punk at the time. I was into punk, uh, uh, so that didn't last. And then, then I went to a guy in Huddersfield actually, uh, who, who was a great player and probably a great teacher, but, uh, it was all about rudiments uh, and I couldn't see the point in learning to play rudiments because I was a punk rock drummer, you know, um, I was wrong, you know, admittedly. <laughs> um, so, uh, and, and, and also at that time I, I had this idea of becoming a session drummer <laughs> until I realized how much work you had to put in to be a session drummer and what you had to know, what you had to learn. So yeah. I, I kind of dropped out of the lesson side of things and just, you know, started playing in bands and, um, Went into the studio for the first time when I was about fourteen or fifteen and did a demo uh, with some yeah. older some older guys, um, and then um, yeah, went to so, art college and and you know started drinking and playing the you know playing in pubs. <laughs> what was your first band then before? Uh, well, before you yeah, had the, yeah. The, the first the first band was me and Vince, uh, and we were called well we started out we were called It, uh, and then we were called Satan catchy names oh. uh and, and then and then the first proper band um when we went to the studio and recorded these these demos when i was about 14 they were called uh, exodus um but not not obviously not the the hardcore exodus band yeah, yeah 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 uh yeah we were called exodus um then after that i joined a band that was a covers band playing in pubs all over the place called stranger uh, and that was just sort of that was just a bit of fun. We were just playing, you know, Bon Jovi and Don Henley and all sorts of stuff. You know what was around at the time. Um, and then after, then after Stranger um, was my kind of first prop, well, second proper band. 
who were really good actually, um, and they were called uh, Big Spread. We had a we had a French singer called Francois, and uh, yeah. he had the idea for the name, uh, and Big Spread was the Last Supper. Okay, so it was the idea. It was a big oh, spread, big yeah. spread of food. Um, yeah. And 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 it was a really it was a really interesting band because we we kind of we had a great guitarist and bass player, uh, Sally and Aid, um, and we uh, we played like funk. So it was kind of like the Chili Peppers with Elvis on vocals. Because <laughs> Francois was very much a kind of he had that sort of Elvis acoustic guitar, you know, sort of thing. Um, yeah great band i love being in the band and we got we got a, a, a you know a bit of attention from record labels but then unfortunately uh, and we, we got a percussion player to join which was great to play with a percussion guy <clears throat> but then um you know then i got a call from one of the other band members saying that uh francois had been deported he, he was over here illegally from france and, oh, no. he'd, he'd, and he'd been thrown out of the, con uh, the country so that was the end oh. of the band oh no <laughs> Oh dear! So that's that 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 was that was that was a band that nearly got there, and then yeah. after that, and then after that, I joined uh, I joined um, Embrace. Embrace, but have you have you heard from Francois since or? No, I, all all I know, and we were only together for about less than a year, and we did quite yeah. a lot of work, uh, maybe about a year. But no, all I know was that he came from Marseille, he went back to Marseille. And I, and I think I got a postcard from one postcard from him, and then that was it. So I don't even know his surname, so I can't even find him. <laughs> um, but but he, it's a he, very he, common name, Francois. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Francois from Marseille. Yeah. <laughs> Probably hundreds of them, thousands of them. Yeah. So, so how did you um, get into so like how did you form and break? So because you're the original member of Embrace, right? Um, well, the, the original two, the original two members are, are the brothers, obviously, Danny and Rick. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So they 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 formed. Uh, we weren't we weren't called Embrace back then, but they formed a band. Um, they then brought got in a bass player called John Senior, um, who's not in the band anymore. Um, and then I joined after that, and I joined. This is my thirty first year in the band. So it's a long wow. time. I, I joined in, in 1991. Um, and then it took yeah. us five years before we got a deal. So, yeah, so there was me, Danny and Rick, and a guy called John Senior. And then two years after um, I joined, John left the band. And Steve, who is our current bassist, joined. Yeah, yeah. So, we, so four of us have been in the band since 1994. And then Mickey Dale, our keyboardist, joined in about 96. So yeah, so since since 1996, it's been the same lineup. It's always like the five of you since yeah. 1996. Yeah, yeah, because um, uh, embrace of sort of like um, headline shine on. Yeah, uh, twice. I think, twice. Yeah. It was yeah. in 20, 2017. Because that was the first time that I went to Shine On. Because I like going to Shine On. Like every year I've been going. In yeah. 2017, I think that was uh, when you headlined. You were the Saturday headliners, I think, at Shine On. At yeah, time. I think so. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And then you also did a one day shine in Birmingham. You were there. And I was there <laughs> yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, we did. That, 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 was a, that, was a, that was a disaster. <laughs> In terms of organisation, not for us, we had a great gig, but yeah, it was it was a uh, yeah it was a, it was a mess, wasn't it? Because yeah. I think they, were, they were due to do it in the um, the arena. In my they? head, in, in my head, because it's so like over a period of so like three days, it's yeah. okay that way. But if it's only for one day and there's so many bands, I think it doesn't quite sort of like work <laughs> the same way. And uh, uh, you also did. 2019 again you were so like Saturday headliners in 2019 so you're one of the one of the shine on favorites <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, it, it's a great it's a great it's a great uh, event you know we we didn't know what to expect when we went down the first time and we yeah. thought you know because it was at uh, Butlin, Butlin's we expected it to be <laughs> some sort of really you know 
I don't know, not very well organised. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but we got there, and the and the venue is obviously fantastic. It's a great venue, uh, and um, you know the the you know the the lighting and everything they put in there, and PA was really really good. So, yeah, both those both those um, shows were were fantastic for us. Yeah, well, one of the girls that I go to shine on uh, with every year, um, her name is Gemma, and she got me this message. Well, it's um, a message for you. Gemma said that she loves you, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> yeah, and she said, I'm going to read this to you now, because she said that I have seen Embrace so many times and used to get all excited when I went to uni in Huddersfield that um, I might have sat at the same table as Embrace in a pub or eaten off the same plates. And she also said, uh, what I think, I believe that you also studied in Huddersfield College. I, like I you did, studied yeah. textile design. I, I did, yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but also Gemma said that she loves how um, Embrace or how, I also love how they know the audience are getting older um, and tell you to move up and down on your toes rather than jump because <laughs> our knees are too old for that. Yeah, that's Danny's. That's Danny. Yeah, that's what, he, that's what he says to them. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're all, we're all getting older. We're all getting older. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, Gemma, so, yeah, Gemma. Yeah, I'm, I may have, I may have, probably have met Gemma if she was uh, around. Yeah, well, um, Martin, there's another message from Martin Porritt. Um, he said, I love Mike Heaton, a great drummer and the West Yorkshire lad like me. <laughs> and he added, also like me, he's quite handsome. <laughs> I totally agree. Yeah, you're right, Martin. What can I, what can I say? What can I say, Martin? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what, what was what was what was Gemma's surname, by the way? Um, Gemma is now Burn, um, but she was Mills. Gemma Mills at the time, um, but she got married recently, and she's now called Gemma Born. Oh, okay, so, okay. Yeah. Well, hi, hi, Gemma, and uh, was it Martin the other one? Uh, Martin Porritt is the other one. Oh, and, okay. Also, um, these are all the messages that I got when I uh, posted that you know you when they posted the guest announcement. Um, Stephen Kenny, uh, I don't know if you remember the uh, band, uh, Manchester band, Bounce the Mouse. Bounce uh, the Mouse. Yeah. No, I don't, I, no, I, I, no, I don't. Unfortunately. Yeah. Well, Stephen Kenny now lives in America, and he said that he loves Embrace. Okay. Is, yeah, that's good. And. Um, also, um, Mondo Castro from the Philippines, from Manila. Um, he's got a question for you. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to ask this until later, but uh, he wanted me to ask you, how does it feel to have Coldplay as admirers? <laughs> and of course, <laughs> one, of your, one of your songs, like Gravity, uh, yeah. that was written by Chris Martin, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, the whole, uh, the, the whole story of that um, is quite well documented, but basically um coldplay supported us um at a gig we did in blackpool years and years ago in uh, 2000 i think it was <clears throat> and it was their, their first ep when that came out and they supported us and um we, we got to know them then and then danny became good friends with chris um and um, you know he, he sort of cites us as being a band that influenced his songwriting um and so yeah when when they uh he'd written the song gravity and he didn't think it suited coldplay so he just he rang us up and said you know do you, do you want to use it uh, and we'd never we'd never used anybody else's songs at all and we still haven't um you know we've, they're all our own songs so but we tried it in the studio it, sat, it felt good uh and, and at the time which was about 2003 they were obviously you know exploding worldwide so as soon as our record label heard that you know we'd been offered a, a Coldplay song, they they said, "Oh yeah, you've got to do that," and we did it, and it was great. It was you know we'd been away for about two three years writing an album, and we came back, and it was a big hit, and it got us yeah. back up there. Um, and you know they're they're a great band. They've done some incredible material, and then back in uh, what was it twenty. 17 i think it was um you know they asked us to, they rang up and said, said to danny do you fancy supporting us for a couple of nights at the principality stadium in in, in wales um yeah. which was lovely lovely and you know we did that in front of god knows how many people 50 60 000 people so 
you know, it's yeah, it's good. It's good. They're a great band, and it's it's nice that you know, it's nice that they like us as well. You know, it's it's yeah. reciprocal. But we, you know, we we like each other's music. So you embrace love, um, Coldplay, and then Coldplay love um, embrace yeah. as well. So it's all like yeah, which is good. Um, Trevor Palmer asked me this earlier. Um, he wants to know whether you've met Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, no, I, I, I haven't met Gwyneth Paltrow. No, Danny, Danny met her. Uh, Danny spent a lot of time with Chris uh, for, 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 you know, when he was living in London, actually. Um, and yeah, he met uh, Gwyneth, but I don't, I don't think we ever met her because Chris came into the studio a few times when we were recording, but he was on his own. So I know I didn't. Danny met her, and yeah, apparently she's a, a lovely person. So yeah, yeah. Well, um, I've got another question from um, Mark Whiteside. Mark Whiteside is the drummer of Evil Blizzard. I, I know, I know, I know, Mark. Are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm going. I'm going to the studio on Sunday to record drums for his solo work. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's actually what his question is. How do you love drumming on his songs? He said. <laughs> I hate it. It's horrible. I'll never do it again. It's a terrible person. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's good. He's uh, Mark's got a very uh, very unique voice. We did we did an album together uh, under the one sided horse name, uh, which, which was great. Um, uh, and we haven't done much recently, which is a shame because well, everyone's been busy doing other other things. And I've got another band yeah. called Land Sharks that I play in. Um, but yeah, yeah, Mark, Mark's uh, he, yeah he's written some some great tunes. And uh, yeah, on Sunday we're going. I think we're going to record drums on two or three of his songs at, oh. at, at, in our keyboard studio, Mickey Dale studio. So, oh, that's weird. Yeah, yeah. so, um, <laughs> yeah, as long as I get back from Spain, okay, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> well, you were talking earlier about doing all uh, mainly your songs, but um, there's one that's particularly um, of importance to me because I really enjoyed it. Um, three is a magic number. That's a song that you did a cover version of. Actually, yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah, that was the other one. <laughs> <laughs> because the reason that I, because I love De La Soul. I'm, I'm a big fan of De La Soul. It wasn't wasn't written by De La Soul. Though. <laughs> <laughs> but then I realized I realized now, and I only found out about this yesterday when I was doing the script for today's After Drummer, that. Three is a magic number. It's actually by someone called Bob Doro. Bob Doro. Bob, Bob Doro is an American uh, who 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 wrote some albums that were to help. They were to help school kids uh, to to learn, um, you know, uh, maths. So he he had an album called Multiplication Rock, uh, and the, and there were all different songs. There was one is a so and so, two is a well, three is a magic number, four is a you know, and that and that's yeah. what it was. And three is a magic number. Obviously, was picked up by Della Soul, uh, who had a massive hit with it. And then, <clears throat> and then, I, I I can't remember why we ended up doing it, but we ended up doing it a cover version of the original Bob Doro version. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which we did uh, we did on a Radio One session actually. Um, but then, and I don't know if you know the full story, but then. After that, we actually uh, we were playing at Brixton Academy in London, uh, in about I can't remember what year it was, anyway. But but uh, we actually uh, we got in contact with Bob Doro and we flew him over from America, and he came on stage with us and played Three's the Magic Number with us. Oh wow! But he he must be like really old now because I found out that it's like a 1970s song. Yeah, like well, nineties... yeah. Well, when he when he came over. Uh, which would have been, I'm guessing, about 2004, something like that, maybe. Yeah. Um, he was probably, I mean, I didn't ask him, but he, he looked about 70 then, you know. He, he, he was definitely, yeah, he'd, he'd been around a while. Um, yeah, but yeah. lovely guy, lovely, cool guy, you know. He, he was great. Um, and, yeah, there, there's a recording of us somewhere, um, yeah, playing it, Please Magic Number, with him and Dar Danny, sharing the vocals on it wow well maybe yeah. it's on youtube i'm gonna look it up on youtube but anyways yeah thank you to embrace i actually found out the original of three is a magic number <laughs> so, yeah. But, yeah but anyways mark whiteside said uh he just sort of like made a comment that you're a top man so yeah, right. I, love mark. I, I like mark 
Trevor. He's brilliant, brilliant drummer. And Trevor said that you also covered How Come by D12 and Eminem. <laughs> you, keep, you keep remembering all these. I, I forgot. Well, I haven't, I haven't forgotten them because I think it's because Gravity was the only one that we sort of made our own. You know? yeah. um, but but the, the other two, yeah, How Come and uh, Three's Magic Number, they, they were just kind of covers. Although the version of How Come we did uh, came out incredibly well because um, we, we took it from obviously being the rap it was to a really slow, uh, a really slow ballad and really dark ballad, um, and again we did that on the radio. Yeah, that was on the Radio One. That was a live lounge on Radio One. We did that as a, as a live yeah. recording. Um, I don't even know where the recording is now. I, I haven't got one, but um, but yeah, it's um, yeah, it came out really well. I'm just trying to think now if we've done any other covers, which we probably have. <laughs> No, but it was all like because um, this is like a rap, and I thought you know, Magic Number is a hip hop um, um, no, um, song as well. So who decides? I mean, who sort of like comes up with like, oh, let's do, let's do how come by D12 or so, like, and change it into something so like embrace I think, sound. How, how I think I think how come was I think it was Danny's idea, our singer's idea. I think. Uh, and I think maybe three is a magic number, may have been Rick's idea. I'm not, I can't remember it so long ago. Um, <laughs> but how come, yeah, definitely, um, when it was suggested, I thought that's a strange song to do. But then Mickey Dale, our keyboardist, started playing it in a really slow, like a ballad version. And then we put really sparse drums on it. And, and the version, uh, as it came out on the live session, because we, I think we flew back from Spain that that night or the morning of the session, or I can't remember. Anyway, we were very tired um, and we were really nervous, um, and it came out really well. In fact, I think the year it came on Radio One, there was like a best of live lounge sessions, and I think we got voted the best, the best oh, song. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so I've got was, a CD compilation of all those live lounge. Um, the the okay. CDs that I've got, yeah, I've got those ones. <laughs> but um, Embrace has got a new album coming out next month. It's on the twenty sixth of August. It's called How to Be a Person Like Other People. That's that's quite a nice that's that's a nice title for for an album. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, um, there's a new single called We Are It. I was watching it last night because it's and the video is absolutely amazing yeah i think it's the best one we've ever done i have to say <clears throat> yeah you know. but um it's got i don't know if you it, it's for me it's sort of like really good because it's got this you know a house I, I, I knew you were gonna say that <laughs> that's where it came from <laughs> yeah that, that was the vibe yeah it was that because when they did it back in 1980 whatever it was two three four whatever it was yeah obviously it was groundbreaking you know um <clears throat> Uh, and I've always loved that video. We've we've all, all always loved it and the song, incredible song. Um, yeah. And uh, there was a young, uh, it's a young filmmaker called Alex um, who, who who made the video for us, um, and he just did an incredible job. You know, we literally got together in um, someone's an old shed in someone's garden in Bradford. <clears throat> we put up a, a bit of green material obviously for the green screen and then yeah. each of us played in front of that did two or three takes of the song and left it was like you know we, we did our bits in like three hours and then alex took it and spent two months making that into the video it is and yeah i think we all agree it's probably the best one we've done you know we've done some we've done some good videos and we've done some bad videos uh <laughs> and um yeah this is definitely one of the best ones we, we've ever done and we look, we all love the song. Yeah, the song is is just you know one of our favourite tracks off the album. Um, in fact, yeah. I've been rehearsing, been rehearsing it this afternoon because um, we'll be playing it at um, Bingley Festival next week. All right. Well, you are going to be touring um, the new album next starting next month, thirty um, first of August. I think it's the yeah thirty first of August in Aberdeen, and then yeah. all throughout September as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so are you really excited? Are you really excited about that? Yeah, yeah it's, it's brilliant. Well, you know, we haven't done a we haven't done a proper tour for you know three years. Obviously, with COVID, 
<clears throat> so it's it's going to be great to get back out there uh and i just hopefully people can afford to go and see bands because the problem at the moment is that you know no one's got any money because you know fuel prices are going up but, you know, that is true. it's it's a, it's a, you know it's a pretty horrendous time for a lot of people really so um yeah. you know we really appreciate the people that you know that that, that people put their hands in the pockets and uh and and want to come and see us and and hopefully hopefully you know plenty of people will come because we've got you know we've got some great shows lined up i mean luckily because we've got such a back catalogue of of music you know we can pick we can pick different things plus we'll play you know we'll play quite a few tracks off the new album because we're yeah massively yeah. proud of the new album so um yeah, yeah. It, should, it should be good well, also, there's still the virus still here. I mean, it's like it's not gone yet. So people, I, I've noticed that on Facebook, those people who so like avoided it like in the last two years, and now so like there's so many people saying that they've got it now, and it was all like it's not gone away. You know, we've still got no. COVID. And so <clears throat> yeah, it, it, it's not gone away. Uh, I, I mean, a lot of people I know have had it recently. Uh, my girlfriend's had it three times. Um, luckily, it hasn't been too severe. Um, I, I touch wood. I've, I've never had it, um, <clears throat> but yeah, a lot of people. And I think that's that's the reason why you know I think ticket sales generally across the board are, are quite slow this year. Well, I mean, there's various reasons. Some people don't want to buy a ticket in case they get COVID. You know, you yeah. can't afford tickets because of the fuel prices. You know, a lot of people are going to gigs that they've had booked for the last three years that have been postponed, you know, and then a lot of people don't want to risk buying tickets until the last minute in case they get COVID. So yeah. it's, it's it's a difficult situation. But, you know, for whoever turns up to see us, you know, we'll we'll, we'll put on the best show we can. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hopefully it'll be OK. And there are a lot of the venues as well. So if they don't get uh, the ticket sales that they're hoping to get, then the venues or the promoters will just cancel it which is again um i think for uh fans if they really want to go and see the band they should just buy the ticket you know like in advance so at least it will go ahead and it, there's no danger of it being cancelled because <clears throat> yeah uh, well yeah I, I hope they do i hope they do ticket yeah, sales yeah. are you know the, the slow for every every band i know it's not it's not yeah, easy yeah. at the moment um <clears throat> our tour will be going ahead because we've got you know we've got a great promoter in SJM who've promoted us for 25 years and they, you know, yeah. um, they can afford to do it. So, uh, you know, we will be doing the tour. Um, but yeah, I just hope that people can afford to come along and see us because yeah. the thing that yeah. makes the gigs for us, uh, it's the audience, you know, and it sounds, sounds corny, but it is, if you've got a great audience, then your yeah. our gig is going to be better. You know, well, I'm gonna go and see you in Manchester at the Apollo. But right, this is a question that so like I mean, me personally, <laughs> something that because um after the gigs, I like hanging around and waiting for the bands to come out so I can ask them for photographs. And how do you feel? I mean, generally speaking, are you are the band members like you yourself? Are you okay with that? Do you know, just yeah, with yeah, of course we are. Yeah, anyone anyone who says they, they they aren't okay with that, you know, shouldn't be doing it, because you know <laughs> it's it's all part of it. It's all part of it. It's what I used to do when I was young. You know, I used to go to St George's Hall in Bradford, hang about outside the stage door, um, you know, to, to just to get a glimpse of of my heroes. Um, and I think that the best answer is that you know I'd be more worried if people didn't want to do it. You know, when people stop asking you uh, for interviews and when they stop asking you for photos, then, you know, that's the time to get worried. <laughs> but, you know, we, we feel very, very grateful that people still spend the money and come yeah. and see us. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I've got no problem at all with spending time with, you know, I mean, it doesn't always work out because sometimes we have interviews to do afterwards so we can't come out and, you know. Yeah. yeah. But, but, when, but when we can come out, then... Yeah, I, I would never turn around to anyone and say no. You know, you can't have well, a, you know. That, a, a, that a, is good to know. So definitely after the gig, I'll be out there. So like waiting for the band to come out and waiting for you to come out so I can have a photo with you. And okay. I've got, I've actually got a couple of singles that I want the band to sign as well. So hopefully you can sign these things. But, oh, yeah. um, 
talking about so like you um when you so like hang out and why to have photos with the bands that you that you like um on so on your facebook page <laughs> i'm sorry but i've been looking at your facebook page i saw a photo of you with this book <laughs> uh <Steve. laughs> smiley yeah <laughs> Clark, yeah, yeah. I love Smiley because he's a legend. He's a legend. He's, he he's, is a legend. Fantastic. Yeah, he's not just a brilliant drummer, but I love the way he actually he's also like a fan. And um, I remember when he was on Ask the Drummer, he said that we are, we all are, we're all fans. You know, he, well, for us, I mean, we're not musicians, you know, yeah. we think that, oh, these musicians, they don't really do the same thing as, as us fans. But Smiley said to me that he's also like that. That's why this clang, um, this book is just absolutely amazing. <laughs> I really enjoy it. Reading. It's great. You know, whoever, if anyone's watching and they haven't read that book, they should read it. Uh, I got, I got, I bought a copy and I read it in about two, three days because like he says, you know, yeah, I mean, he, he's had some amazing experiences. I mean, I met Smiley. Uh, for, the first time I met Smiley was, um, <clears throat> pardon me. We were in, um, we we're in Glasgow. Um, uh, we were playing at the Barrowlands. And he was playing with Joe Strummer, supporting the Who, um, and, and yeah. we had the same tour manager. So, I, so he came, he came over and had, we had a chat. Um, uh, and then I didn't see him for years, and I saw him about three years ago, three four years ago at a festival, uh, and we kind of reconnected. And uh, he he plays co drumheads, fantastic. Thank you, Smiley. He's, <laughs> he, yeah, he's, he's great. He you know he's a big big fan of the brand, and uh, you know so I whoever he's playing with because he plays with loads of people. Um, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll go and see him. And I, I saw him the other week, uh, playing with the alarm. I took my daughter, 16 year old daughter, to see the alarm, and she really liked it. It was great. Um, yeah. so yeah, yeah, Smiley's great, but yeah, he's, he's right. We are all fans. I'm, I'm, you know, first and foremost, a fan of music. You know, if I, even though we've done some amazing things with Embrace, you know, and people say, oh, well, you've, you know, you've played, you know, uh, you know, arena shows and you've done this yeah. and that, yeah. it's all, all the big shows. You know, still, if I meet somebody who is one of my heroes, I'm still just like a little kid. You know, that's what that's what I'm like. You know, um, yeah. I, and and I think that's good. You know, because you, you've got to well, you've got to keep that youthful energy and yeah, you know, keep that spark. And, it, and it, it's good because at least you understand what fans like us or like, like me, you know, feel whenever you come out of the show. <laughs> it's like, you I, know, the feeling. <laughs> I, I Trust me, I, I've done it over the last, since I started started uh, working, you know, with the drumhead band, with Code, since we uh, since I got involved uh, and I've contacted loads of, of drummers, you know, to, to, to use the heads. You know, yeah. I've spoken to some of my, you know, my heroes, you know, um, and still now, you know, uh, at my age, you know, when I meet these drummers from like famous rock bands that I loved back in the day, like we've got um, a guy called Russ Gilbrook who who plays for Uriah Heep, um, uh, and I went down to the studio because yeah. he uses our heads. So I went down to the studio, uh, and Russ is a lovely guy, um, but you know, I, I grew up listening to Uriah Heep, Demons and Wizards, and all these albums from the seventies, uh, and just being in the same room as Mick Box, who's the kind of the only surviving member. Um, yeah, I was like a little kid. It was amazing, you know, um, I could, just because I'm such a fan, you know, um, and yeah, that's what, that's what it's about. That's what music does to you. Yeah, yeah. Well, Trevor said that you also read Clown a few weeks ago. So, yeah, it's a great yeah, book. That, I highly yeah. recommend it. So, um, yeah, so apart from Embrace, you also have a band called, uh, you're in a band called Land Sharks. You mentioned it earlier. And yeah. your um, uh, Steve um, from Embrace is also a member of Land Sharks. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so Steve and I have all, uh, we're we're kind of the two band members that have always been into like punk and more sort of rock stuff. Steve probably more punk than I am. Um, and for ages we were talking about doing something, and then about um, or oh, about three years ago something like that, I rang him up and said, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's just, let's put this band together and play some hardcore, 
com something completely different to embrace. Uh, and we looked around for people to play with us. Uh, and th there's um, a lovely guy called Stephen Beaver, who's our um, uh, our tech on tour. You know, looks after the drums and keyboards. Uh, who's in a fantastic keyboard player himself. So he joined, <clears throat> and then he suggested a guy called Mikey Shiraz, uh, who or Mikey Baird, <clears throat> who plays in a band called Mr Shiraz, has done for 15 years. Uh, he runs a, a, a venue in Huddersfield called The Parish, great venue. Um, okay. And he came on board, did some singing on, on a, a couple of the tunes that we'd written. Um, okay. And then he suggested a guitarist called Sam Wood, uh, who is a credible guitarist, and he's a guitarist for a band called Wayward Sons. Um, <clears throat> so, so we've got these, you know, th these these five people together, uh, and it's just a bit of fun. You know, we've recorded two EPs, all of them recorded in this room here. This is where I record um, yeah, you know, yeah. all the all land shark stuff, um, and it's just it, it's just a bit of fun. You know, we played last week in in Leeds, um, and oh. we just we just have a blast. You know, it, it's kind of it's it, the idea started out as a punk band and it's kind of morphed into this i don't know i don't know what it is really it, it's kind of it's heavy <laughs> but it's very <laughs> different from embrace yeah it's very yeah a load <laughs> of, it's heavy nonsense yeah it's good <laughs> but the, you don't think that there's going to be sort of like a clash that there's uh, you be doing embrace and then you're doing lunch arts and or no. you always have time for for both um, yeah we, we yeah, land sharks. We don't do much really because Sam's busy with with um, Wayward Sons and other things, and Mikey's running the pub and he's in another band. Obviously, Steve's in Embrace, you know, uh, and Beaver's out doing. He's in plays another band as well. So you know, we just get together and just uh, and just have a bit of fun. Uh, you know, uh, hopefully we'll get back in the studio later this year yeah. and record some new material. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's just a bit. It's just a bit of fun, you know. And also, me and Steve have. Um, done uh, we've, we've written another album with um my girlfriend's next door neighbor actually <clears throat> who's who's never been in a band but has always played a bit of guitar and sung so we started throwing some ideas together and over lockdown um yeah. he'd sung on them and we've got a full album ready to go there as well um so yeah, yeah i like to keep busy okay well Apart from these two bands, you also the director. You were talking about it earlier. Uh, the director of Code Drumheads. Yeah. Now, Code Drumheads is a company that sells like drum skins Correct. and accessories. So, That's right. um, yeah, can you just sort of like? I mean, I've looked at the website of Code Drumheads, and um, oh no, there's a, there's um, an interview there with you, and apparently you said something that. Uh, you want to be seen, or code drumheads want to be seen as the Aldi or little <laughs> of the drum of the drumhead market. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's it's an interesting analogy. Um, we're we're, kind of, we're going to update that website soon, but uh, <laughs> but no, I, I agree with what I said was because you know a lot of people uh, you know saw code drumheads as a, as a cheaper brand because we are. You know, we're, we're better value for money than uh, the, a lot of the two main major brands. There's only two, two, three major brands in the world. Um, and, and my idea was, uh, you know, you, and if you look at Aldi and Lidl, when they first came out, everyone saw them as cheap supermarkets. But what they've done is they've built up the name and now they're just as popular as any of the other brands. It's like yeah. um, it's like with cars with Kia, the brand Kia or Hyundai. They were seen as cheap cars and now they've built the brand up and they are just as, you know, they've, they've got the reputation alongside Volkswagen and Ford and all the other ones. So that was the idea. It was that we were coming up from underneath. We were the underdogs uh, and, um, and, you know, we're going to succeed. And we are doing, you know, we've got, um, you know, we, we distribute now. We sell in across Europe, in France, Spain, Benelux, Italy, um, yeah. Germany. Uh, into the US, um, we're about to start shipping out to Australia. Um, so you know, it's 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 gradually building. Uh, and I, I, I didn't realize when I did the interview that I actually got the t shirt on, <laughs> but uh, um, but yeah, and that's what's you know, that's what's on all these, you know, these are these are all um, code heads on this code. kit and that kit, all my kits. Um, and it's again, it's something I've got a passion for. I, I'd always wanted to be involved in some part of manufacturing a drum kit. 
So when a guy called James Potts, who started the company, he's, he's sadly left the company now. Um, but when he started it and asked me to get involved, um, you know, I said, yeah, um, let, 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 I'll be a partner. You know, I'd, I'd just come out of another business thing, some pubs that I was involved in. So I, uh, I said, yeah, let, let's, uh, let's build it up. Uh, and it's, and over the last five years, it's, it's built up now. And we've, you know, recently we had a guy called Jerry Brown who plays with Diana Ross. He's using our heads, you know, he's, he's just done, he did the, you know, the Jubilee thing and all the uh, arena yeah. show. Jerry yeah. Brown's an incredible drummer from, He's been drumming for you know through the seventies, eighties, nineties. Great drummer. So we're, we're picking yeah. up some really good players. You know, um, a guy yeah. called James James Price from Nothing But Thieves, who are an incredible band, probably one of the best bands in England at the moment, I think, or in Britain. Um, Andy Burrows from Razorlight. He's playing our heads. You know, so um, it's 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 growing, but it's it's good. It's it's a slow growth, but it's good. But it's, yeah, yeah. Well, Mark. Uh, Mark Liptot, who's from Stockport, and he's in, he's the drummer of a Stockport band called um, Colacello. He's the one who said that um, there are more and more drummers are using um, code head um, drum yeah. skins. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah. Well, good luck to the company. Yeah, so <laughs> good luck to Thank code head. So, um, but also, oh yeah. Sorry, do you want to add? No, no. No, that's fine. That, that's that, that's fine. Yeah, if anyone wants, if anyone's interested, uh, the website is um, codedrumheads.co.uk. Check yeah. it out. And, yeah. And apart from that, uh, being the director of Code Drumheads, you're also the director of um, Drum Ed, which is drum and then um, Ed. Python Ed. Which I mean, from there, from from the website, it says something like it's an online drum education, but yeah. um, it's not an yeah. online. It's not just online, though. Is there? You can do face to face teaching. Or um, yeah, it, it's it, it's an interesting one. It's something that we we um, we've had to sort of put to one side a little bit over the last few months, um, and that was only because um, during lockdown, every drummer became an educator and, and drum ed is is short for drum education you know like co-ed in the states so it's yeah um, okay. so it's, it's drum ed um I, I, and you know we've got we've got a great team there's myself a guy called rich wilson who owns raw teaching studios in halifax really great educator uh, and then the third partner uh, was four, there's four there's a there's steve, mid, steve, steve white. white yeah steve Who's white his style council his style council drummer yep yep yeah, yeah, he's 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 in there as well. So he's one of the directors. So we've got this bit, you know, we've got we've got a load of lessons that we've been filming over the last few years um, that we're going to, you know, put out there and people can subscribe to it. So that's something that's going to hopefully grow over the next um, the next year or so. Um, but it's just finding time to do everything. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially that you're going to be touring, you know, going to be touring yeah. soon. So doing, yeah, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's a busy time at the moment, but it's, but it's good. Um, and, you know, yeah. we'll see what but, happens. But away from John Ed, you're also doing sort of like private tuition, right? You're doing sort of like uh, um, tutoring. Yeah face-to-face -face tuition yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, i've uh in, in this in this room here i've got two two kits set up um you know so when i'm fa uh, teaching face-to-face -face, the student can be in a kit opposite me um yeah. which i think often helps because i i'm not i'm not a technical drummer i'm not a technical wizard i'm not like you know i i can't do all the stuff you know all the fancy stuff but what i can do is teach people how to learn how to play in a band which i think is the most important thing so my teaching, a lot of the time, take you know, I take people who've never played before and get them to a, a certain level, and then when they if they want to go beyond that and learn all the fast, mega fast chops and stuff, then I'll probably say, well, you know, you need to go see somebody else. But because I play bass as well, um, I've got like a bass rig behind me that's 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 kind of, it's got like pitch shifted two amps, so it sounds like Royal Blood basically. So I can I can play along with the the, the guys the people I'm teaching and sort of yeah. say well this is this is this is you're playing in a band now this is how you, you you learn to play with another instrument because far too many drummers learn how to play drums and and they just learn how to play drums and read the dots and read the music and they don't learn how to um, play with other musicians 
or improvise. You know, I've, I've had I've had drummers who've, who've done their grade, you know, eight in drums, and they come in, and I'll say, okay, well, let's just let's just play a groove, and they'll say, well, what do you want me to play? I'm like, I don't care anything, and they're like, well, you've got to tell me what to play. I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah. you've done your grade, you've done your grade eight, just play a groove, and then do a fill. What sort of fill? Any sort of fill, make one up. You know, and some people they've got these skills, but they haven't got the skills to just improvise and just let loose and just just do it. And jam, so, jam with and other musicians. Yeah, yeah. Ab yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Just jamming with people. That's where that's where the fun is. Um, yeah. So so yeah, I, I, t I teach here. If anyone wants to contact me, they can. You know, I did have a website, but I took that down because um, it, it was old. But if anyone was interested in drum lessons, then they can contact yeah. me, you know, private message me through my Facebook page or, you know. Or Embrace. Or Embrace. Or, page, or, yeah. yeah, Embrace, Instagram. You know, I've got all that sort of stuff. Website, so, yeah. Well, yeah, do I, you I, have a... Sorry, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I don't have that many students, be, and that's only because I haven't got that much time. <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, but you know, it, you know, I will try and fit people in if if they want to. But uh, because this is this is all fully set up to for Pro Tools for multi tracking as well, so I can record, you know, I can record the drums, yeah, studio quality, and you know, the bands come yeah. in here and record as well. You know, I, I rent the place out for, and I I produce, I produce bands as well. So um, you know, I, I love Thank producing, you. recording, and mixing as well. Yeah. Well, do you ever find that? maybe the um students or people want to learn how to play the drums just because it's you who's going to be teaching them because maybe they're a fan of embrace and they I, want yeah. to so much. I, I have to say I, I, when i first started doing it and that's going back because i because i never taught i never took any grades i just i just i was self-taught and then i got to a point three albums in with embrace and i realized i couldn't I couldn't do all these things that my heroes like John Bonham could do. And I realized it was because yeah. I'd never learned, pardon me, I never learned to do the root, play rudiments, etc. So I went back and spent two years, um, you know, learning all the stuff that I should have learned when I was a teenager. Uh, and then after that, it was Rick, our guitarist, who said, you know, why don't you teach? We've got a bit of time off. And I said, I can't teach. I'm not qualified. And he said, you'd be surprised. So I started it uh, and, uh, and I really liked it, you know, um, so, so yeah, I, I yeah, I, I'm not a technical teacher, but I I enjoy doing it. <laughs> well, looking back, aren't you glad that your dad gave you a snare drum instead? Of <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> thanks, Dad. It was yeah, it, yeah, it, it was it was great, uh, and I you know I I love the drums, you know. I, it's a running joke in the band that all I think about is drums. You know, whenever you know whenever Rick's talking to me or somebody, he'll say. It's like I can just see your head. It's just going drums, 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 <laughs> and it and it and it is yeah because I play an embrace. Yeah, we'll play again in one sided horse with Mark. We've got land sharks. I play drums there. Recorded an album with drums. I teach drums. We've got drum heads to do with drums. Heads, yeah, I, I, I've, I've got numerous drum kits. I collect drums. I've got code drum heads. You know, um, so. Um, yeah, my life is pretty much drums, really. <laughs> um, um, but you know, yeah, you've you've got your dad to thank for that. So. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, bless him, bless him. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Well, I and mean, this this room that I'm in now used to be his workshop um, um, years and years ago, and I, I I changed it into my into my studio uh, when he passed away. Um, but going back to you know learning to play the drums for the first three years when i had a proper drum kit after we got my snare drum for the first three years my drum kit was in my parents bedroom um and and that because that was the biggest room upstairs and my yeah. drum kit was there um we used to rehearse there in their bedroom my first two bands yeah and they so, didn't mind they didn't mind no so. <laughs> now, my, my my dad always said uh, it's a detached house so it's it's not too bad but it's still it's still very noisy as drums are and he always used to say you know if the neighbors complain you know he said you can come home from school and you can play for an hour every night and if the neighbors complain i'll tell them to get lost <laughs> oh that's that's he's really good your dad was really good right? he, he was a good man yeah um i also found out that you're the ambassador for martin house hospice so yeah 
um, you still are, or is that? Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm not as active as I was because my uh, my my girlfriend used to work there, and um, she she ran. There was a, 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 a like a, a battle of the bands competition called Centre Stage that she ran for ten years, which was an amazing opportunity because. <clears throat> what we used to do is, or what she used to do, was, um, you know, you'd get loads of different bands from schools in the area and they'd all enter. And then we'd have heats yeah. at the um, uh, uh, very small venues in Leeds would have the heats. And then the final would be at the O2 in Leeds. So, you know, these bands, that were, a lot of them were very young, would get to play on the O2 stage as a, a, wow. as a final. 12 of the bands got to play, or 11 bands got to play at the O2. And then the winner yeah. of that, went got a place at Leeds and Reading Festival to play. That's, so there, there was this, it, it was amazing. So there was this great competition that she ran uh, and it was yeah. young people helping to raise money for other young people who were poorly and not in the same situation at, you know, Martin House. Martin House is a fantastic place. You know, it's, it, it, as everyone says, you know, it's a hospice and obviously, you know, um, there's a lot of people that, um, you know, don't come out of there. Um, but they just do a, such a great job for the young people that, that do have to use yeah. it. Um, <clears throat> and so, so yeah, they asked me if I'd be an ambassador, and I said yes. Um, and, you know, if they ask me to do anything, I, I will always help out, obviously, um, because it's, you know, it's something that's close to my heart, helping, um, you know, young children with life-limiting illnesses. It's, um, there can't be, there can't be a much better thing to do, really. Yeah, well, that's another thing that sort of like gets you busy. So like you're a very busy man, <laughs> very busy person. Um, well, well, before we sort of like end the interview, can I just ask you, do you have any drumming heroes? Uh, yeah, loads. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where do I start? I mean, my, I, I'm a bit, I'm a bit predictable in that my, my all time hero is John Bonham. John um, Bonham. Just because he's got a certain feel that's, no one matches for me really um but you know that there are the, the modern drummers um like uh, benny greb who i absolutely adore you know he, he's an incredible drummer is benny greb um you know dave grohl um again i think is, is, a, is a, uh, uh, because dave grohl he, he he writes some amazing drum parts he's not just a great player but he writes some really interesting riffs you listen to uh, those crooked vultures that album and obviously the Queens of the Stone Age stuff, um, just really interesting, um, interesting, uh, you know, things that I would you wouldn't normally think of. They're not straightforward, um, but yeah. All, I mean, like going back through, you know, Ian Pace again, brilliant. I mean, there's there's there, there are too many to uh, to, to mention. Um, I I you know I'm I'm forever watching drummers play. Drummers, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to pick up uh, hints and and tricks and stuff, and there's some fantastic new drummers coming through as well. Um, I say James Price, nothing but thieves, uh, r really great drummer. Um, yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot. Yeah, I I I always forget when I forget I ask the question, but uh, <laughs> uh, because I watch so many different drummers, uh, and I you know I enjoy. But what I do enjoy watching probably more than just watching drummers play is drummers playing bands. You know, um, I'm not a massive fan of watching drummers play solos. That you know, even John Bonham doesn't really interest me that much the solos what interests me with john bonham is the groove and the feel he has when he's playing in a song you know oh, that's, yeah. that, that's the, that's the kind of thing that, uh, that, that I, and, and that's why people like steve gadd um who you know they do a drum solo but they base it around you know a lot of the time around rhythm and not just flying around the kit as quickly as possible uh, again steve gadd yeah. incredible player yeah, well, Travis said that a friend of his used to have one of John Bonham's drum kits. That's brilliant. Wow. That's very good. Wow, yeah. Um, mm. So do you twirl? <laughs> <laughs> when you're playing? <laughs> it's an old, uh, not, not very well, as you can see, because I drop it all the time. But, um, but yeah, no, I don't. I don't. It's, uh, well, sometimes involuntary. It, it might It might just happen. Um, but it's interesting because yeah. uh, uh, another drummer that I really admire for what he does with the band is a guy called Ross Jarman, who plays with the Cribs. Um, and Ross told me years ago, he said, there are only two, ru two rules in the Cribs for the drummer. One, 
he doesn't twirl his sticks, and two, he doesn't take his top off. Oh, <laughs> while he's playing the drums. Oh, <laughs> okay. Because that's, you know yeah, that's, that's the big rock thing, isn't it? You know, top off, you know, twirling sticks. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. you know, one of the other reasons that got me into that new video, We Are It, um, because you were the first. You were the first one. Because when I go to a gig, when I go to sort of like, I do love it when the drummers sort of like do it with a stick. They start the song with a one, two, three. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and We Are It, a song, um, and that video as well. Indeed. That starts with you doing that. And I thought, oh, yeah. oh my God, that is so good. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, because we, we, you know, obviously a lot of the time in the studio, uh, you, you're counting the rest of the band in. Uh, and then uh, it, I didn't think about it. It was Rick, who our guitarist, who produced the album and mixed it. And he just left the click in there. And everyone said, yeah, let's just leave it, you know. <laughs> well, that's, that's really good. And um, uh, I also wanted to ask, I mean, you you said that you've been playing since like uh, 14? 11. 11, 11, 11, 11, yeah, 11, that's right. Yeah. Um, have you ever had so like uh, what I would call a disaster, like a drumming disaster? Have you ever sort of like hurt yourself? So like while playing? <laughs> or, or, um, <laughs> no, uh, look, I mean, I've had the, the normal ones while you know, hitting yourself in your face and things like that and, you know, falling off a, a, a drum stool. But um yeah, no, no. Touch wood. I, I haven't. I don't think I've had any really, you know, bad disasters. You know, I had a disaster once when we were playing over in in Spain when we when we went out to do a secret show for some fans, and the night before the show, I ended up the album had just gone to number one. I think it was out of nothing, and we had a big party, and I ended up st standing on a broken bottle with my bare feet and cutting all my feet and foot open, uh, and it was my bass drum foot. So I had to play the next day, bandaged up um that was that was pretty horrendous but uh yeah on stage touch wood uh it, it's been okay you know everyone has problems dropping sticks stands falling over you know yeah, yeah but 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 generally nothing 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 really really bad yeah well my last question is um be being a, a drum tutor or a drum instructor what would be your best advice to aspiring drummers, to all the drummers out there. <laughs> my best advice would be to do, to not do what I did. And my best advice would be to learn the basics, learn you, learn your singles and doubles. You know, the, your singles and rudiments? doubles strokes, rudiments, the, the rudiments? rudiments, yeah. You, you, don't, you don't have to learn them all. There's 40 of them. You don't need them all. You know, well, I mean, you might do, but, um, you know, but you, you, the, the, the basic ones are singles and doubles. Learn those because that means you'll be able to do a lot and learn to play in time. Playing in time, playing a solid beat in time is going to get you the, the work. You know, playing as fast as you like around the kit, it might be impressive, but it won't get you the gig. You know, you've got to be a, you, a drummer is the foundation of a band. And I've, I've always said this that, you know, you can have the most amazing guitarist in the world, but if he's playing on the foundations of a rubbish bass player and drummer, it will sound rubbish, you know, whereas if you've got a solid base, then you can build on that and create something yeah. that's, that's a lot bigger. Um, so, yeah, learn how to, you know, if, if you're going to, if you're going to learn to play the drums, the, the, the key, the key thing, learn simple grooves. You know, learn to play nice and simply and not learn all the fast stuff if you want, you know, that's great, but, you know, you've got to be able to keep time and you've got to be able to groove and, and make people, if you can make people tap the foot to your music who don't, who yeah. aren't drummers, then I think you're doing a good job because that's that means you're making somebody move. And if you can make somebody move, you know, uh, yeah. So I, I would say that, learn some, learn some basics, learn to play in time and play along to as much music and as varied, varied music as you can. Wow. That that's amazing. We haven't actually had a, a guest on us to drummer who play <laughs> who played <laughs> drums. <laughs> mm. Although we did once. Um um Dave Morgan so like did this impromptu so like when I introduced him, he was sort of like playing a bit of a drummer. That was he, right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> but that yeah. was the first time that we actually heard the drummer so like <laughs> <laughs> 
did play a drums. Well, thank you so much, Mike. I'm really glad yeah. that you know that you wanted to speak to us, the drummer, wanted to speak to me, and even though you know, like there's so many. I've seen the number of replies that you got from that post that so many people wanted to sort of like speak to the band and speak to you and the other band members. And I'm glad that you know that you came. You said no, it's yes, pleasure. No, no, thanks for thanks for having me on the show, and um, you know, I, 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 hope, I hope you um, go from strength to strength, and you can get you know plenty more guests, um, and yeah, uh, and and hopefully you. you know a shameless plug, if anyone's out there wants to come and see us, all the details are on the website. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm gonna sort of like uh, put a link to the embrace. Um, Facebook page and also the right. information about the tour as well. So, um, yeah, thank you so much. Any final word for our friends? Because I know in Manila it's midnight, so I don't think, well, I mean, it's Thursday night. There's work tomorrow, so I, I'm sure a lot of them are actually asleep. <laughs> but, oh, that's, that's so, but if you want to just say hello to all the Embrace fans in Manila. Oh, yeah, go. well... Yeah, absolutely. Hello to everyone who's watching over in Manila. Really appreciate you staying up. Um, <laughs> you know, we'll we'll probably do it again in the future at a better time for you. But uh, if you are watching, thanks for watching. And um, yeah, check out Embrace if you haven't heard of us, because uh, we haven't been to Manila yet. <laughs> hopefully someday. Hopefully there'll be so like promoters out there who will you know, take you to Manila. Yeah, because yeah. like, yeah, Coldplay. I mean, Coldplay. I think I'm not sure if they've been to Manila, but they've been to maybe Hong Kong or Singapore or somewhere. So, but yeah, I've seen some of my friends are like posting videos of when they went to see Coldplay. So yeah. hopefully, hopefully Embrace will go there as well. Yeah. And do a gig there. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Really. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me on the show. And, and um, yeah, really appreciate yeah. it. Uh, then don't see you uh, in September at Manchester Apollo. And I'll be outside waiting for the band to come out and having you know waiting for to have a photograph with you okay the other I'll, I'll try and remember well. to come out and uh, and say hello <laughs> thank you bye-bye see, see you bye-bye yep. bye. 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 Oh, no, thank you so much to all of you um who came um joined this live and for all your comments and the messages that you sent um via the facebook page so i'm i'm really grateful and that's just a small sort of like an extra um episode of Astro drama we've got the usual sunday one and that's going to be the special one year um anniversary episode of Astro drama and uh as i posted on the facebook page uh i'm going back to my roots because I'm going to have a Filipino drummer for the first time in, um, on Asta Drummer. So hope to see you all again on Sunday. Um, enjoy the rest of the, the night, the evening. And um, yeah, I'll see you soon. Uh, as always, love music, love life, and love, love, love drummers. They're so amazing. You've just seen Mike Heaton. He's he's so awesome. So um yeah, see you again soon. Bye everyone. Bye.